people like Oscar Underwood uh, fighting for their ideas of empowerment of the community and, and the, the empowerment of parents and kids. When this man did not believe that a 95% black school was automatically bad, when power people in this community believed that a 95% school was by, on its face bad, and um, ultimately the people of Fort Wayne all lost the argument. In other words, when, 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 a, when a poor child doesn't get their due because of civil issues, civil rights issues, we all fail. Um, I had a sister with Down syndrome, and I advocated for special gifted programs because ultimately we're all special. And when everybody can be special, then everybody wins. If your child has a better world, so does mine. And this is the whole, it just bothers me the concept of a brown America is bad. <laughs> yeah. I it just, you know, but the issue of civil rights to me is just very powerful. You're, when you become loyal to the people who have subjugated you, it creates what's called a double consciousness where yes you understand that that the government has hurt you but you really can't do anything about it and your life isn't really that bad so you, you're willing to go along with the program you don't like it but you're willing to go along with the program this double consciousness how um Give me a thought on that from a world perspective. It's everywhere. <clears throat> it's everywhere. You go along to get along. Get along to go along. Whatever. And one of the, the issues that I <clears throat> faced as a social worker dealing with large groups of immigrants was people in power would say, um, send me someone um, for me. And a newspaper actually said, send me someone that's at Send me two Africans. <laughs> the most absurd thing anyone ever asked me to do. Um, if you're in power, you have the chance to anoint someone. That anointing process is, is a double-edged curse. You're talking about the, the dual consciousness. You know, if I play the game right, I will be chosen to represent my people <laughs> by the power structure or by my people. That's the difference. In other words, if you are chosen by your people in an open, competitive, <coughs> merit-based process to represent your people, then I think you possibly could be uh, a representative. Then you're moving into the constellation of others mm -hmm. where the other people of their power choices are going to now be either bringing you in or not bringing you in. In other words, it, you know, it was not my choice to tell the mayor who to talk to in the Burma community. Mm -hmm. It was his choice to go down and find out who they are. Like, take me to your leader. <laughs> the one of the biggest problems, you know, in, in the group was was determining who that leader was. Mm -hmm. You know, come in, until there were 500 people here in Fort Wayne from Burma. There was very little um, ascendancy. In other words, everybody was really kind of helping everybody else, and then. You had certain people who became spokespeople. Some of them were aggressive, whoop-ass kind of spokespeople, fighting for their people. Others were playing the game people. And a lot of it was determined on their social class in Burma. And the interesting things about, uh, about the leadership that came out of the jungle was that if you're good with uh, AR-15, 
if you're good as a medic, if you're a good fighter, and by God, you've got some status in that camp. Sometimes that meant you then had status in Fort Wayne. In other words, earned leadership. But, but the idea of anointing someone by a power group to be given power rather than somebody taking power. Very different ways of, of, of coming to influence. But, you know, when you talked about the, the Liberian situation, um, it's happening now every day in our immigrant communities. In fact, one of the things that I, one of the big issues that I had to deal with was refugees that came 20 years ago who said that these refugees aren't refugees mm -hmm. that came last year. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, they are. They're here. Let's get beyond that. Forget about your old national you know, uh, situations. They're here. Work, work it out and, and give them the respect of that so the idea of, of you know of choices anointing someone is is, is very difficult typical in, in in the Buddhist faith there's there's um, two types of power and I, I find it fascinating and I also find it fascinating the State Department and many many international agencies fail to recognize the influence of faith, especially organized faith, on political issues. In Burma, Aung San, Suu Kyi's father, had the leadership of military general, which is called Anna. It's, it's military or, or king's power. He also had Oza. Oza is the power that comes up from the people. If your village floods, who rallies the mm. people to save the village? That is Oza. Su Chi and, and her father Ong San had both concepts of Anna and Oza. They had the leadership that comes by birthright or by military status and the power that comes up from the people. Now, in our society, you know, building that concept of an anointed power, you know, the, 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 the Rock, Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, that anointed power in our democracy that comes from money and, and family versus democratic power that comes up from the people through government. Um, the old question is, what are you going to do to take care of us if we elect you? 